Alright you guys, so today I'm going to show you how you can save money with pencil zincs. So, or at least on your pencil zincs, sorry. So, everybody who owns a boat is familiar with this. Your engine typically has a, a pencil zinc somewhere through the, the raw water side of uh, the exhaust. For instance, uh, coming directly off of the raw water pump. Or, for instance, your engine may have these scattered all throughout. What these zincs do is they protect other metals inside your engine. And once this zinc wears, your engine metals become more susceptible to wear. So, basically when you're buying these zincs, sometimes, well most of the time, it's pretty standard with its size. It's an E2. This is an E2 pencil zinc. And it's about as big around as my pinky finger and pretty much about just as long. So, that being said, they're, they're fairly easy to get a hold of. Um, and so what you would buy is this zinc and a plug for it. Now this is not the particular plug for that zinc, but you get the picture. They look nearly just alike. It's just a different size diameter. But basically, those would hook together like that. It would thread in. So, what I have here is an E2. This one is a little bit smaller. This is an E20HZ. And my particular engines use 10 zincs per engine. The E20HZs seal with an O-ring, and the E2s, I use thread sealant, as you can see on this used one. However, one of the problems many people will know already from zincs is when it comes time to change them, they're either left with something like this, that's a worn zinc, maybe something like this, also a worn zinc, or maybe something like that, completely cleaned out, which is not where you want to be. You do not want to go without zinc inside your engine. You really don't want to go much less than this, if you even want to go this far, because you have much less surface area uh, for that anode to be susceptible to the wear before your engine. So, basically, a lot of times when you pull your zinc out of your engine like this, sometimes you can save a little money and unscrew the zinc from the, brat, from the plug. Well, other times when, the, when you start to uh, unthread it, you end up with something like this. The zinc breaks off in the plug and it is no longer usable. Now, that's not necessarily a big deal um, because you can just buy a plug with your zinc. That's the most common way of changing it. On a standard E2 zinc with the plug, I think it's typically around seven or eight dollars from your typical boating store. However, with my engines, and a lot of you other Caterpillar owners, and possibly Cummins owners now too, will notice that they have very particular threads that most boating supply stores do not sell. Well, I have found online, I have found the plugs separately, and the zincs separately for Caterpillar, and either way it is still expensive. So each one of my engines, as I said, has 10 zincs. That's 10 zincs and 10 plugs. Caterpillar wants over $20 per plug, zinc, and O-ring combination. So you're looking at nearly two, or actually over $200 plus tax to change out the zincs on an engine. And this is something that takes place a few times a year. And also, I didn't mention that I have four of these engines inside my boat. So I have over, I have 40 zincs in just main engines. To change. So I have a method to save you guys some money. And that would be muriatic acid. Now I've been doing this for a solid year and a half and I have had no negative repercussions. Basically what you want to do is you want to take a milk jug or a uh, coffee can, a plastic, not metal because this is highly corrosive, and you want to pour muriatic acid in there. And you want to submerge your old zinc plugs in the muriatic acid. 
Now, you are going to want some PPE. You're going to want gloves. You're going to want eye protection. You're also going to want a breathing apparatus, something to protect you. You do not want to inhale this stuff. Not to mention, the harms, the harms of uh, inhaling zinc fumes are uh, quite dangerous. For instance, metal fume fever being one of them. That's why you don't weld galvanized metal. Metal fume fever is dangerous and you do not want to take any risk of that. However, if you go outside in a well ventilated area and do this, I think you guys will have good luck. Now, I'm not responsible for any damage you may cause. If you have a, a metal boat or anything like that and you spill this, it's not very good. This stuff actually smokes when you pour it out of the bottle. This is typically used on swimming pools. Um, in fact, that's where you, you buy it from, a pool store. It's pH control for pools. But it has worked well for me, and basically I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to pour some in here. You do not want any of this on your hands, especially not in your eyes. And you do not want to breathe it. Now I'm going to place this old pencil zinc in here. And as you can see, it starts to bubble. That's a good sign. It's starting to wear away the zinc. And in approximately 30 or 45 minutes, it will cease to exist and you will have a clean plug. All right, you guys, so I have added all of my zinc plugs that needed to be uh, soaked in this solution. You can see it's bubbling quite well. In approximately 30 or 45 minutes, we will come back and check on this and uh, see how they're looking. Once it stops bubbling, that's typically when it's done. Um, basically, all you're gonna need is some tongs to, that you're willing to dispose of to get them out. And then you're gonna wanna soak these in a bottle in a bucket of water. All right, you guys, this is a completed plug. As you can see, there's some slight discoloration that takes on more the color of a penny after this. It's cleaned out. Now all of this right here, this is actually a sealant that I use for this plug as opposed to like a thread tape or anything like that. But this is a clean zinc and I've been doing this to my zincs for about a year and a half. Now I'm not responsible for any damage you may cause to anything of yours, all I know is that this method has worked for me and um, I figured I'd share it. Um, it saved me hundreds and hundreds of dollars in zinc plugs, um, not to mention a major hassle. Uh, I wish I would have known this in the beginning when I first started changing all these plugs as opposed to building up so much stockpile of plugs. But anyways, I hope this works for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, feel free to add any more boating questions or uh, tutorials or any other anything else I may be able to make another video video about. Thanks, you guys.